Hello, in this video, we're looking at a lot of different builds that are not uh, very RNG heavy. So this first one is a stamina based knuckles build using the liberator job. And we're just going in to see how many hits we could take without any additional mitigation. Uh, so we're getting hit about three times, uh, mission level 380. Uh, four times and just to kind of show you that I could still drink a potion to get myself back up there and take a few hits um, so it's the idea that we're not getting one shot or even two shot here uh, but at the same time we also don't hit very hard but um, so we're just gonna let this play out and let ourselves get killed here uh, so the fight is over and we die. So just a rough idea of how long uh, you could have survived. Now this next one, I do have Monk 400% and Sentinel. And I wanted to show how much Sentinel, see at the bottom left corner, uh, I'm intentionally letting myself get uh, burned to death and uh, get hurt. So I lost my Sentinel. So I'm uh, just to kind of drag this out a bit what happens if you manage to get enough mp2 sentinel again uh so we sentinel again and we just i uh, just sort of imagine if we were stronger offensively as well that uh, and uh, as well as playing better than we currently are that we'd have a better shot at maybe defeating the enemy here but uh i already have enough mp for another sentinel and uh, just making sure that I eat all the fires just to kind of demonstrate how long we could have lasted. Uh, same build, I say same build, but same amount of stamina and spirit and the damage taken from the previous clip. But we are going to just let this fight end to see, well, okay, that's nice, but how much offense could we do uh, and so we're going to go in where I am building my offense around uh, Chaos Bringer. I am still using Sentinel at the beginning here. I am soul shielding more. I, as a result of all the damage mitigation I have, my soul shields do not consume as much as uh, a player that doesn't have as much stamina or mitigation invested. Also, I, I do have Soul Shield Break cost on this particular build, uh, just a little bit. Well, quite a bit. Uh, so I am using Steel Peak here. Uh, it's not doing very much damage, but part of my goal is just to keep on the pressure as I start to build that max MP uh, and sort of just keep going at it steadily against the boss. Um, so I, I don't know whether or not my HP damage or my break damage. I am also narrating this after the fact just because I'm stitching like 20 videos together. Um, where it uh, looks like at this point I'm about halfway through and uh, my Sentinel is still holding pretty strong. So once I have enough max MP, uh, at some point I, I actually try to go for a double dragon. Uh, I might have already done it. It, it was a mistake because I, I didn't have enough MP to sustain that lifestyle. I'm also not being too adventurous here. I'm just uh, trying to do a soul shield and um, bait uh, Bahamut into uh, uh, some type of melee attack that's a little bit more predictable than some of the other attacks. I say predictable, but just um, fewer patterns to memorize. Anywho, uh, I'm trying to now prepare for a Chaos Bringer where I will use uh, my second job I, with the Lightbringer duration. I'm doing all my buffs. Just one layer of focus. I did switch over to Liberator, use the job action so that I have that mighty guard or heroic guard going. And I'm going to try to go for a double dragon combo as best as I can and try to break Bahamut. Uh, I did make a mistake there just a moment ago where I'm like, I act, uh, well, yeah, double dragon, um, one 
full double dragon combo almost took Bahamut out. I did screw up there, and uh, at that point I was just panicking and just hitting whatever buttons to try to land one more combo ability and finish Bahamut off. Uh, but it's the idea that even though I was pretty tanky and that first round went pretty slow, that I could fight and uh, succeed. Uh, now, this next round, I don't actually fully remember what I was doing. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm just trying to go right in and fight against Warrior of Light just to kind of show um, that the first round's a bit slower where I am gradually building up for a Chaos Bringer on that second round. So uh, just doing a little bit of soul shielding soul searching, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, and for some reason, I insist on punching him and bullying him in this corner. It's a pretty bad idea because I don't always know um, what he's about to do in here. <laughs> uh, now, because he got that divine protection up, I wanted to dispel it with his own radiant slash that I soul shielded earlier. Uh, but at this point, the, the first part of the fight is taking quite a bit of time. And, uh... But the hope is that I will Chaos Bringer to deal with the second part of the fight a lot faster. Uh, but I do need to avoid getting dispelled, so we're... I'm gonna start Soul Shielding here to just get more MP. Instead of trying to end the fight right this instant. And, uh, at this point I, I feel like, okay, it's probably time to end the fight, so I'm uh, just trying to wait for those soul shield opportunities. Whirlwind was a massive mistake, uh, so now at this point I'm doing normal attacks to get some MP back up, but I'm not patient enough to fill all the way up, so I'm switching over to Monk, doing my Chaos Bringer, three buffs, focus, uh, switch over to Liberator, do my job action, and I'm going to try to go for a double dragon combo. But, um... Unfortunately, my Chaos Bringer is also getting eaten up pretty bad. Uh, so I'm trying to just finish the fight as best as I can. And, uh, in this case, it, it, it worked out. So this was the mission level 380 version. And then we have the strength-based knuckles where I'm using Dark Knight and I, for the most part, have strength and stamina and some near-death damage taken and a little bit of spirit sprinkled across my gear. Uh, I do have artifacts this time just because I just wanted more strength. Uh, but just kind of looking at our master points for a moment... I, I do have strength up there, and stamina, and spirit, and my Dark Knight up to 400%, near-death damage taken, and um, I, I didn't really know where to spend the rest of my stuff. Now, I do have Rat Tails spent on the War Mage, and just see how many hits I could take. This is how many hits that you'd have to sort of negotiate with this setup. So, uh, I could take several hits there, and still survive. So, um, let's say that I'm I'm going in, and I'm playing for real or <laughs> closer to real. I'm using Mighty Strikes and Lancet to kind of help out. Uh, Mighty Strikes allowing me to bypass the enemy's physical defense, and Lancet causing me to recover some HP and MP as a result of exploding an enemy's weakness. Uh, just also notice how much faster this was compared to the Liberator fight where the strength just took him out and I barely used any combo abilities. Uh, but in this case, I am trying to use... Um, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get completely staggered here. So I do have that uh, Lightbringer going on. But uh, at this point, it's a little chaotic, so... I am going to go back to, like, making sure that I can soul shield a little carefully and uh, just sort of 
taking my time a little bit here as I get my bearings. Uh, just now I almost died, so I, I tried to use a light bringer so I didn't get completely knocked out. Um, and uh, for the most part, trying to just take out the enemy nowhere as efficiently as I was for the first part of phase two. But that was an example of strength knuckles. But let's say that we're doing this a bit more aggressively. Uh, so this time I am using Chaos Bringer for the second half of the fight. And uh, I also have Monk's Focus that I'm going to set up for the second half of the fight. But this time I'm just kind of soul shielding less and trying to just knock him out quickly as possible. Buff up all the buffs. Uh, using Sentinel as a little bit of a buffer. And I'm just going to kind of go wild on him with Chaos Bringer and hope that I take him out pretty fast. That That is the hope. Uh, no guarantees, but I am trying to do it anyway. Uh, I completely missed that double dragon, but nothing that a few punches wouldn't resolve. So that's just an idea of strength, knuckles, and uh, not really relying on RNG to get the gear fully optimized or fully set up just using the smithy. Uh, but now here's an example of, of casting. So I'm using a sage. I have intellect and spirit and soul shield MP recovery across the board and a little bit of soul shield break cost. Uh, I even have my magic sigil or soul of uh, Minwoo across stuff. And then on my tyrant, uh, I do have gambler 120% and summoner 120% so that when I do chain cancel, I get some MP back. I also have some Lightbringer duration and Soul Burst MP recovery and luck to help out with that. But this is where uh, I'm trying to make sure I have, uh, just as an example, if you use a zero MP ability, you can switch jobs. Uh, so Tyrants uh, and Luna and Magic, it's a zero MP ability and you can kind of just chain cancel off of that. And in this case, I'm uh, just trying to prepare for an Ultima just for giggles, but we're also going to show how much damage uh, I can take. But first, let's look at our master points. So I do have luck on the Tyrant, and uh, I had damage taken at max HP. I had Lightbringer duration. I have Soul Burst MP recovery, and I made a mistake. I meant to put that in, increase MP limit boost rate. Now on the Sage, I have Stamina, Intellect, Spirit. I have just enough Sage to get to 160%. I have a lot of damage taken at max HP. I, and I have Soul Shield Break Cost and Soul Shield MP Recovery. Uh, but just an as an example of how much damage I can take. Well, first let me rebuild the Ultima up, just for giggles. And uh, so, yeah, this is me just trying to rebuild for an Ultima. But I'm not going to be using that in the actual live fight. This is just to get Wool mad at us. And now I'm just going to let him hit me. To so, like, you could survive about three hits on this particular caster build. Uh, so, going in for real on the Sage, uh, giving this a good try. Um, uh, at that point, my, my, uh, <laughs> I, I could not actually switch to the Black Magic Sigil, so I'm alt-tabbing away, going away, coming back, and I'm trying to, like, fix why I can't switch to, uh, my Black Magic Sigils, because I'm not actually trying to go for an Ultima here. Uh, and at this point, now that the enemy's about to get weak to fire, I am trying to use my little, uh, Lancet to refund some of the MP back and I'm trying to go for like just sort of a pretty ruth ruthless like just shooting fire in his face and occasionally going for a melee attack um, if I can sometimes I forget to actually attack uh, but I'm trying to build just enough MP so that I have uh, a good amount for next round 
uh, bravery for the, the brake gauge so I don't have the light bringer as often. And uh, in this case, I'm using the end loot and chain cancel with Gambler 120%. And I didn't mean the fully used Tyrant, uh, even though they have the Soul Burst MP recovery. So I'm going to try to teleport away and try to just go from just regular spells and try not to eat a Radiant um, Slash. Now, sometimes I do screw up just like just now I, I, I got too into his face. Uh, and my break gauge is suffering at this point. But I'm also hoping to end the fight pretty fast. So, uh... I know it's not like fully caster because I'm still like just smacking him with the butt of my gun and that type of thing. But here's an example of a bit more aggressive with casting. So I do have summoner 120% this time instead of summoner 50%. I, I, uh, I didn't have enough. And I do have gambler 120%. But this time I'm using lunatic instead of lancet and chaos bringer instead of light bringer. And so, just as an example, I am going to just sort of uh, chain cancel my way up before the fight even starts. And uh, Chaos Bringer on the job that has more Lightbringer duration. And I'm going to just start going wild with the spells. I'm not even going for an ultimate at this point. Uh, I still need to teleport out of the way. Uh, I'm going to use my Tyrant that has the higher Soul Burst MP recovery even though I forgot to do the MP limit boost rate. And then I'm going to switch over to uh, Sage. And I screwed up there really bad by letting myself take that hit. So at that point, I'm, I am panicking a little bit. Um, I should probably switch to a different spell, but I'm using fire because uh, Warrior of Light likes to charge head first into a lot of attacks. But this is sort of aggressively trying to cast keeping my distance, and that's how the fight could go. Higher risk, but yeah. Now, you might have seen my Chaos Bringer Duelist build setup. Uh, this is my attempt to not be completely Chaos Bringer based, even though... Uh, so we have agility, critical break damage dealt during Light Bringer break damage dealt across our gear. I'm using Merciless Champion so that I can do Icy Mangling on... Uh, just twice in a row. And I do have Barrage and Invisible to take advantage of all the agility that I have. So Barrage from Hunter, Invisible from Assassin, Lunatic so I can flip out faster, and Chaos Bringer so that I can flip uh, without using any MP. I do have my Ninja set up to do Soul Burst MP recovery and Lightbringer Duration and some luck, as well as Summoner 120%, so that I can Chain Cancel, and Gambler 120%, uh, so that when I Chain Cancel, I build max MP and recover some MP based on my luck. And just looking at my Master Points for a moment, on the Ninja, I have at least the luck, ah, and I have Lightbringer Duration, Soul Burst MP Recovery, and Increase MP Limit Boost Rate. Not very much, but I do have it. Trying to find Duelist. The Duelist I have stacked up Agility, Duelist all the way up to 400%, Critical Break Damage dealt first, Ability Break Damage dealt after that, During Light Bringer Damage dealt, and then even some Critical MP Recovery and Critical HP Recovery just in case. Now here's an example of how weak I am. If I get hit once, I am effectively dead. Where on this take, I'm using the Ninja's Utsemi to avoid getting hit, and then the Ninja's Kaneshibari to paralyze the enemy. And I'm going to just Chaos Bringer, Lunatic, Invisible, Barrage, and switch over to Duelist, do my little flips, my Icy Mangling. I'm going to Soul Burst the boss on my Ninja that has the higher Soul Burst MP recovery, switch back over to Duelist, keep flipping, and hope that even though my Utsemi ran out, that I could keep going and finish off the boss that way. My will manifest. As an example of Knight being somewhat more defensive, we're going to look at our uh, gear. 
where I have stamina, spirit. I went overboard on parry MP recovery just because the greatsword does have the enhanced guard um, passive, which I'll show later. My combo abilities, they are stat bonus stamina based combo abilities for now. And I am leaning into spirit for my knight's uh, blessing of light job action. I'm using sentinel to protect me, bravery for my break gauge refill, onslaught for more break damage. And then the samurai, um, I forgot to choose a evocation and ultima job for these. Uh, the samurai is there so that I recover more MP when I do parry successfully. And so we'll we'll look at that for a moment. But looking at our master points, I have stamina, spirit, knight 400% just in case, damage taken at max HP, and a lot of parry-related MP recovery and HP recovery. And I also had some ability break damage dealt. For the summer, I, I don't have that leveled up, so I do have some luck because I had some gambler 120%, I think, lightbringer duration, and increase MP limit boost rate. But let's talk about the enhanced guard. So let's say the summarized job action recovers MP when you parry, and then the enhanced guard, you start charging up with your great sword, and then you hold the guard button, uh, like the L1 or uh, left bumper and you'll get the parry for up to five seconds. So as an example, I'm now all that MP and HP is trickling in and you could potentially weave that into your greatsword combat in order to, to keep parrying. Now, as an example of all this put together, I'm going to go in and just kind of let Warrior of Light beat himself up. I am soul shielding on occasion. Uh, and if you parry, not a soul shield, if you parry that Radiant Slash, it will not dispel you. Um, so at this point, I'm really just letting him hit himself. Didn't mean to use blessing, a Blessed Shield there, because it refreshes every time I parry anyway. And somehow I accidentally parried one of those hits because I did not get the spell. But just notice how much MP I have at this point. Uh, I have a lot to keep using Sentinel. I, I used Sentinel on the wrong job. I should have used it on the job that had the higher amount of HP. But let's go and let Warrior of Light smack the crap out of himself. So we're parrying up to uh, five seconds worth of hits. And we don't lose any break gauge during that. Well, at least for the, the beginning of it. But uh, I don't remember if I lost my Sentinel or not, but I'm just going to put it back up. And I'm still letting Warrior of Light just smack the crap out of himself. So that's... Uh, uh, sorry, I was being a little evil there, hitting him while he was down. But that's an example of what we could have done. And then we have the Marksman, or just let's say the gun, where I pretty much don't have any meaningful job affinities except for I, I did in this case try to go for black mage 400 percent i'm reusing most of my sage gear so that i don't have to spend any more materials and i do have starlight on my aiming slot specifically my aiming slot because it recovers mp uh, i'm getting starlight because of marksman 400 percent my ninja, uh, same as earlier in the video. Uh, so just talking about the marksman still. The marksman has an aiming link that recovers MP based on the magic damage they deal. And starlight is magic damage. So on the marksman, I have intellect stacked up. I have stamina just in case I do get hit. Marksman, 330% to get the total of 400%. That is so important for this. And then the increase MP limit boost rates there because I am using Black Mage 400% on this particular build. Things lined up that way so I can build next MP that way. But I am going to try to use... Well, let, let me just show what happens, how many hits I can take first. So... Not too many. Well, uh, four hits from this fellow. It was still like two seconds or less. But now let's get a little bit more serious. Uh, so I'm going to use Utsemi. 
and um, maybe even lunatic. And I'm going to try to aim and starlight. And he dodged, so I need to be careful. Uh, try to go for another aim and starlight. And uh, it's been a while since I used a gun, <laughs> even though I used it like on Tuesday. Uh, but notice how my MP's coming back. And I'm just like kind of going nuts. Now in this case, I'm going to try to get some MP back as cruel as this looks. And then I'm going to try to buff up uh, more buffs to keep myself safe. Teleport, barrage, lunatic. And then... Because I know he's probably going to go for a shining wave, I'm going to interrupt him with a dazing bullet. Just like interrupt and then go right into starlight. Uh, I thought I could take that, so I need to sort of teleport starlight again, teleport starlight again, and just take him out like that. So not too uh, imaginative, but it worked. Uh, worked for me. Now, as an example of using the axe, I am using Berserker here, and I've just stacked a bunch of random stuff as long as my strength went up from it, where I do have strength and stamina across most of my gear, if not all of it. I did try to use some spirit as well. It's really expensive on the smithing materials at this point. I do have ground pound on the first combo ability, and Brutal Tackle on the ladder, but if you do get access to Wheeling Thrust, that is incredibly powerful. I do have Mighty Strikes so that I bypass enemies' weakness, Lancet so that I recover HP and MP on enemy weakness, and I have Lunatic so that I attack faster. I do have Ninja in case I want to use Utsemi to sort of give myself up to three hits to charge up fully. Master Points on the Berserker, I have Strength, Stamina, Spirit, Berserker, um... Uh, up to 250% near, I'm sorry, <laughs> damage taken at max HP and some parry related stuff and break damage taken, even though I'm probably going to forget the parry. But just to see how many hits I can take, uh, about five hits before I, I just get taken out. So if you don't have Ninja or Sentinel, you have about five hits to make this work. But now it's time to go a bit more serious. I am going to just kick the crap out of him, or at least try to. Uh, we'll see how this pans out. And I completely, completely whiffed that uh, ground found there. But I am going to still soul shield to try to get um, some MP back. And because he has that divine protection, I'm not doing as much damage. But at this point... I'm trying to soul shield my way back up because I forgot to use Lancet to recover MP. So this is my attempt to make that happen and I'm really low on MP and I'm like, ah, shoot. So I'm trying to go for a paralysis, uh, hoping that I can mighty strikes and Lancet my way through this next round. We'll see what happens. Um, but I'm probably not going to go for a brutal tackle just because it's too dangerous. And just really, I, I, I completely froze up there. I don't know why. Lost a lot of Utsemi. And now I'm just trying to trade attacks with him uh, until he's down. So nothing too committal there. But yeah, wanted to make that work. And then we have the katana, where I'm using Ronin specifically because they have a version uh, wandering hero, Mekyaku, that lets you dispel the enemy's buff. I do have stamina and strength. Uh, strength is going to be the main form of offense on this build, just across the board. And I have, in this case... I have Garo, so I can get into the Sension Stance quicker, and then I, I just use the job action on every single Sension Stance because I don't trust myself to do it 
skillfully or fancily. I do have, on the second job, I have Udsemi just in case as a safety net. But let's look at our Ronin. I have strength, stamina, spirit, Ronin, 160%, damage taken at max HP, charge attack damage dealt because I'm using uh, the job action, Yagiri. And then I have a lot of parry stuff because I thought, oh, I'm going to be parrying. But let's just see how many hits we can take. So uh, we can take about four hits or so on this boss. So we need to be careful. Sorry. And so let's go in for real. We're going to, uh, in this case, <laughs> just get smacked really friggin' hard. And I'm trying to do a little bit of a parry. Maybe I... Um, I think I'm just going to get my butt kicked here. I accidentally bugged out of that one Yagiri. And uh, I'm not playing as well as I could be. I could be using a lot of co command abilities. But the great thing is I don't actually need the Radiant Slash to, um to take away his buffs. I'm not fully sure what I'm doing. I think I'm just experimenting at this point. And I'm like, should I play cool or just play efficiently? And I'm torn between both. So I'm just like, ah, let me just keep fighting and just get my butt kicked. Um, so I'm gonna dispel that divine protection. And I am going to Utsemi for this next round and maybe even um, try to paralyze him. Chaos Bringer. The Lancet was a mistake. I went for Mighty Strikes and Bravery. And I'm going to try to go for Agaro and then start trying to use the Yaigiri that can dispel him as soon as I can. And I can start charging this up and just kind of wait for him to decide if he wants to fight because I am going to stagger him except for Shining Wave. And so I, I could take him out that way. I probably didn't need Chaos Bringer because I had the Mighty Strikes and the Lancet, but I just kind of panicked. Anywho, I hope that helps with several different ways that you could build your character even before factoring in job affinities and even before artifacts come together without any dragon treasure spent on the gear from the dragon exchange shop. And uh, there's going to be some VODs in the little place cards, title cards, whatever they're called, in YouTube. So if you wanted to see my playthrough of a sage doing it somewhat inefficiently, as well as an axe or the daggers or the katana, uh, I'll have some playthroughs linked in the little place cards nearby. Uh, and then there's timestamps in those as well if you wanted to just kind of fast forward. But yeah, hope that helps and until next time.